left and right. All oh, these <gasps> coming after me. I felt like it was random. Oh my god, are you okay? Why are you gonna bring that up, you guys? Hey, I'm coming for you, Jillian. Took away the whole entire match that Sasha and I had. I never in my wildest dreams and during that time did I think that anybody would ever think of it as a favorite. Welcome, if you're in Spring the Bell, this is DS, and we are here with the legendary Molina! <laughs> <laughs> Was it not legendary enough? Oh, I love <laughs> Where are the paparazzi? Hey, I gotta keep him on his toes. We all know that Molina is the founding mother, founding sister of Ring the Bell. We are here with the legendary Molina! Hi, how you doing? Oh. Oh. You were the first top five moments interview. But I gotta say, I got some complaints because it was like the first episode. I didn't quite get Who it. Who complained? <laughs> Who complained? Top three pick. Melina and Alicia Fox. Oh, I got I, I got issues with this stuff. I didn't quite get it at that time. So I'm gonna do a new one. Oh. So part two, top five fan voted best moments of oh. Melina. Oh really? Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we got thousands of votes. So this is completely different, like. It's different. It's the moments that's not in the first part. So oh. here we go. First moment is. Find out, bitch. One of the most iconic slaps of all time. <laughs> I feel so bad. What? You know what, this is one of those things, it's like, okay, we practice and bless her heart. And you know what, like, this is where you know like karma or everything coming full circle mm -hmm. kicks in. Fast forward to another time, but like after years after this, where um, Mrs. McMahon, she's like slapping me. And this is the exact scenario what happened here. I was like, take one, take two, take three. And it was like 50 down the line. And then, nope, we gotta go live. And then and I was like, oh my God, my face hurts after like five. Definitely after the first one, but five, you know, it adds up. And then with this, with Maria, she took plenty more before this moment. Oh, really? So that's the sad part. And it's like none of the takes, nothing, nothing. Nope, we gotta go live. And this one, because it's like, and I did that and I felt it. I felt how hard it hit her. And then I, I was in the moment and I slammed the door and I put my back against the door like this, like, Oh my God. And K-Fed and John were right there in front of me on the couch and I was like, oh my God, I hit her so hard. Like, I felt like shit. And by the time I came out, she like had to do another segment and I was oh. like, oh my God, I hope she knows that I didn't freaking mean it. I mean, it became one of the most memorable iconic slaps of history, so you yeah, did it every, right. Everybody mentions it all the time. Right. And I was like, oh my goodness. And even some of the girls in the back, they're like, <laughs> you know, you were so, so memorable as this like devilish heel. I think a lot of people like meet you in real life and they're like, wait a minute, <laughs> she's so sweet. That's an honor, like seriously, but that's how you know, like I, I see it as an acting role. Right. So it's part acting and then part athleticism because I love being athletic and improv because everything's like on the fly. And if you make a mistake, you go around it and fix it into something else. Like it's such a beautiful art form that combines so many things into one. They told me from the get-go, they're like, you can never be a heel. Would, no, don't even think about wow. it. Don't even think about it. You're too nice, Melina. You don't have it in you. And it took Jazz and Jacqueline to say, I don't forgot who it was that said, no, you're not going to be a heel. And then um, Jazz said, she's like, did you just see her in the ring right now? The way she moves, heel. <laughs> wow. I looked at it. I was like, thank you. Wow, I didn't know Jazz was behind this. Wow, that's really yeah, she cool. came. Her and Jacqueline came in for just like, you know, a guest, um, guest appearance at the OVW and she was there she saw it and I was like she, she has no idea that how much I loved her I oh my goodness and for her to say that I was like that's so cool such an honor you know but the thing is like you did such a good job bitch people were confused that at the time back then the rampant rumor the dirt sheets were saying like all these nasty rumors kind of equating you with this character oh my goodness well after a lot of therapy <laughs> It's like, I kind of understand, I understand, but at the same time, the way we judge people and see people, yeah. it kind of needs to change. But at the same time, I learned a lot and now I'm able to explain it so that if anybody else goes through it, hopefully they could go, they could, they learn that they could survive and they could learn they could change their patterns. For me, it was an outlet because when everybody who was bullying me, and, yeah. and this is the thing, I'm not blaming anybody, I'm not, I'm not hating on anybody, I forgive everybody for what everybody did to me, for the fact that they did the best they could and they did what they thought they needed to do at the time as they did it. We're not perfect, we're all struggling, we're all learning as we go along. 
So I understand why they, they thought they needed to do what they did. But for me, it was just like they were fueling me by whenever they were cruel, whenever they were mean, whenever they had their personality and their attitudes and they try to like, you know, hold me down. I took that and I thought, that was so evil. Thank you for inspiring my character. Ooh. Like it's you fueled me instead of trying to make me quit, instead of trying to me get me fired, instead of trying to ruin my life. You just motivated me to be a better villain. Wow, wow. That character is thanks to you. You hated that character and you wanted to see me fail. You built that character, so you have yourself to blame. I love that, I love that. <laughs> Mike Drop. Let's move to second moment. It is... And Alina! Alina and Mickey are... You versus Mickey James, false count oh. anywhere match. What a banger of a match was this? I was like, I dare you. You just kicked me. I love all the yeah, things that happen that. backstage. <laughs> you have no idea. In my head, I'm always narrating. That's how I deal with, like, I go through things. And I'm like, you bitch. Uh, <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> the way that Tori Wilson and Victoria, like Candace Michelle naked. <laughs> everybody played such a perfect part in it. I wish there was more of that. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody loved this. The fans loved this so much yeah. that I thought there was going to be more. No, that's the last I saw of it, really. Like, yeah. how many times you get to see something like that that's so hilarious? That was the so towel special. gets taken off, everything goes black. What happened? What happened? That was so funny. The, the couch tips over. Like, oh my goodness. It was so good. Yeah. Oh, Ashley! She was there at that moment. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, who came up with the whole crazy idea backstage? Who knows? I, uh, it, it was intricate. I want to say it had to be Fit Finley. Oh, like, okay. Fit is always the mastermind of these brilliant things. But who knows how it got passed along? Like, who knows if somebody like a Dean or an Arn or Vince or somebody said, hey, how about this? How about that? They don't tell us our, their secrets, but whatever they did was so intricate and brilliant that it taught us. So it's part our creativity and part them guiding us. And they teach us of like, oh, this is also different ways to, to be able to to tell this story. And I love it. I love it. It's so love crazy. That. So a little bit before, like a couple weeks or a month before this, you became the women's champion for the first time, right? Oh, yeah. And it was on like a random Raw. I felt like it was random. When they told me, I was like, I'm not ready. Like, no, I, I just, I, if I felt like I just got on the show. I just started wrestling on Raw. Wow. And, and they're like, no, it's time. So I was taught when I did like track and cross country and all these things, I was taught by my coaches, you want to be the best before you go out there and start doing oh, it. You train okay. as hard as you can and you master what you can before you go out there and you try to win contests and this and this and that. So I thought that I had the same mentality in wrestling. So in my mind, it's like, I'm not the best yet. I'm not ready yet. So I wanted to be great before I took it, like until I went for a serious title run. Okay. And they just did it. They just threw me in there. And I was just like, okay, I have to better myself now in the moment to be able to make that title mean something. You filled that top heel role perfectly. You know, there was a big vacuum there. Thank it was really, you. You would put in right there. I love that storytelling. And even in this, like say right here, just beat Mickey. And then after this, it was like, oh, Ashley, what, do you want some too? It was like left and right. All oh, these bitches coming after me. And if you can tell, like seriously, throughout the whole, um, the whole time in SmackDown, I was actually like always in a fight with all the girls. <laughs> It was everybody against me ganging up on me. I'm like, bring it on. I don't need anybody to defend me. You know, the reason I'm wearing this fur boots on my arm <laughs> during Jacksonville's hot summer is because you're a fashionista, you know? Your WrestleMania gears, SummerSlam one. What was your favorite gear, by the way? There's so many. I, like, so really, many. I was just talking, oh my goodness, I don't have the, um, the picture. There's a drawing that we had created with um, Alicia Fox. And it's this... It's like a kind of like a dark goth the navy velvet. One. Yes. And it has like uh, roses, dark roses on it. And I love it so much. I don't know. It's just edgy and, and matched with my hair so well. That's one of my favorites because it also reminds me of like a dark Selena vibe. Mm. Oh, yeah. A yeah. bitty, bitty bomb bomb. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> I also love that you. The <laughs> I, love, I love that blue with the little like the strings on the side and then the feathers. Oh, that was so and good. And the red. Yeah. Some say it's a cursed outfit, and I was like, nah. Why is it cursed? Because I fell off the, <laughs> I fell, I, I like, okay, I missed I my it, entrance. I and I was like, that's not a curse, because you know why? That was the first time people saw me as human, and probably the only time for a long time. But you no, know, you guys related to me, and you went, like, you had sympathy because I just bombed my entrance. Yeah. And you felt for me, and you saw me as a real person. And you know what? I needed that. 
Like even mistakes, even things that you would think is humiliating, serves a purpose. I also like that when you were heel, you had a uh, this leg warmer, and then when you were face, you had an arm warmer. What do you mean leg? Oh wait, are you saying leg warmers like is in the? So you had a fur boots for when you were heel, and then when you came back as a baby face, you had an arm arm cover. Oh, what happened? It was leg warmers. Actually, they were socks. Oh. They were like those thigh high socks, but I cut the footsies and I put it on top. But the reason for that is, is that I like the look of like, I love the look of socks. If you go back to Eminem, mm, right. I had the, so I would wear those yeah, same socks, yeah. but with my um, stilettos hanging out, like I'm peeking out of my, my socks. So I love some, like different things like that. But the reason, and I know everybody hates me when I don't wear my fur boots, it's just trying to, like when they don't tell you and you have to rush for a match sometimes it could be hard to put the boot covers on <laughs> and then when you're trying to travel too to fit the boot covers inside the luggage it takes up so much space because oh. it's so fluffy and they're like ugh, ugh. and it's like you know what i got something's got to give i got to make some really hard decisions right now and it's really warm i'm sweating <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. You know what? Okay, so Eminem, when the guys would wear their fur coats, mm. it would be in the middle of summer, no air conditioning in the arena, and they have the fur coats on, and they're sweating in that. Oh. And then if any time you guys went live, they would throw the coats at somebody or on me, and they would hug me. I was like, ooh, <laughs> it smells. This is too disgusting. <laughs> All right, let's move to the third moment. It is... Yes! Yay! You versus Best Phoenix for Royal Rumble! <laughs> this. Oh my, oh yeah! Just so you know, anytime she used my leg or my flexibility, okay. all my ideas. Okay. I tell her to abuse me. <laughs> she did. Yeah. She did. Because I, when I work with people, I think in terms of what would I do to a person. And so I give that to my, my, um, my heel. I need a heel to be me. <laughs> That was always the wish. I wanted, that's why I like Fox. You know, feisty. <laughs> and that was me as a heel. Yes. I forced up my way through this too. Wait, what do you mean? I won. Like, <laughs> you know, the odds were stacked against me all the time. She always beat me. Yeah, yeah. And then right here, it's like, <gasps> yeah. Your chemistry with Beth was so good. I mean, we all talk about this amazing backstage segment. <laughs> like, wait. <laughs> You have to understand, I also pick myself up. I hold onto her arms, I pick myself up, you know, help her out to make it look more brutal. Wow. Right here, as she's like punching me, mm -hmm. she punched my head straight down into the concrete. Oh my God. And, it, and it was like, bam. And everything was fine. They loved the, the, the take. They're like, it was great, beautiful. It was, yeah. And I'm walking down, you see me walking down the hall and I'm feeling good because it's like, we did a good job. And then people started going, oh my God, are you okay? I'm okay, it was just the lockers. My back is fine, you're overreacting. And people kept doing that until I went to the locker room. I looked in the mirror, I had a big golf ball on my oh. head. It was a huge bump. Oh I God. freaked out. I was like, oh my God, I'm bleeding out. I'm bleeding from the inside. Oh my God. Wow, so this was all very real. <laughs> real situation. <laughs> so, you know, this Royal Rumble match, it was during the time it was like your wrestling was like on another level during that time. This was a time when Bret Hart called you the best wrestler in the world. But yeah. see, this is the thing that people don't realize because everybody thinks I had no wrestling background. And it doesn't matter if you have wrestling background or not so no matter what other people will say I embraced everybody and everybody's different levels told a different story and I love stories if you know how to tell stories no matter who's in the ring with you that's what makes up a good wrestler there's no saying that oh well they're too green or well yeah it's a little bit harder but you can still tell a story a good worker can make anything happen and I love that I love that artistry my character I pretended to not know wrestling because that's the character you grew up with me and I told my brother because he asked he's like why'd you do that it just like made me mad because you weren't doing what I know you could do and I said but this is the beauty these girls needed me because if there was two people who were green they can't guide each other. They can't sell because they don't know how to bump yet. I could bump. They could throw me around, toss me around. I can make it look good. Mm. And then at the same time, tell the story that I'm just like them. And it was a beautiful story. They taught me so much too because they taught me how to guide people, to talk to people. I used to be very closed mouth and not talk in the ring, which is necessary. 
But working with them taught me that. It's it's a it's very um, it's a really good relationship in my head. And so when it came to here, it's like I finally get to do what I know I could do. And it's like okay, start pulling everything out of my my like my bag. You know, okay, let's do this, let's do that. And it was very exciting. And then when I work with Michelle, it's like you keep trying to get yourself to do better than you did before. And it was a beautiful chemistry with all the girls. Really, I really did feel like I had great chemistry with all the girls. Even Maria, like Maria and like girls who I didn't, people wouldn't think I have good chemistry with. I did. If you look back, the stuff with Maria is good too. This is why I'm telling Melina that like, she should be the professor of wrestling because the way she talks about wrestling is like, it's like art. But I, I love that you said that because you tell different stories with every different people. I don't do the same moves. What I do is I, I study everybody and I know and people don't realize I watch the way they walk I watch the way they move I watch the way they sell it's like a personalized match yeah. I make it to fit that individual and then when they're trying to say they're like no I'll do your move I'll do the moves the way you want me to it's like no I'm doing the moves the way you will sell because you tell the story too it's not just me saying hey move to the corner hey do that if you don't move that way, don't move that way. I'll get you that way. Like, we'll make it work. Don't right. worry. You are really leaving a mark in wrestling because all your signature moves that were so unique at the time, the girls right now are using it still. You know, Sasha Banks using it, you know, Alexa Bliss, you know, they're all using it right now. It means a lot because at a time when you start and everybody tells you you suck and everybody tells you like, oh, that's stupid or, you know, you, you get bashed so many times and nothing's ever good enough. And then it's like, well, if it wasn't good enough, why is everybody doing it? And then you see guys doing it. And then I get guys who tell me, they compliment me and they say, you know what, seeing how aggressive aggressive you are and that's in that moment seeing how aggressive you are makes me more aggressive and the guys are telling me that and it's like thanks like okay it, it makes me feel like okay this isn't for nothing and I shouldn't listen to all the negativity what I feel and what I love works and that's why I also tell everybody don't be shy when it comes to who you are and what you are everything because flexibility who thought that flexibility would fit into wrestling but you make it work. You start telling the story and what people say is stupid will change their minds and then they see, oh my God, it fits. Now everybody's doing it. Uh, this is so inspiring. I love it, I love it. Let's move to the fourth moment. It is... Melina! She's back! Oh man! You becoming the Divas Champion. <laughs> Why are you gonna bring that up, you guys? I mean, this was such a memorable moment. The newest, the newest acquisition. acquisition. Marlena! Poor Jillian. Everybody needs to just focus on Jillian's face. <laughs> okay. And I'm doing my moves like, I am coming for you, Jillian. Your face, too. You, you felt so sorry. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. I love you. I think I'm pretty sure I like. I, 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 went, I went near her and I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> and she kept telling me. She's like, it's okay. You guys are best friends. Yeah, but still, it's just, this is the thing. I'm happy because honestly, we felt like they always did her so wrong that she was never gonna get it. But at least we could say she got it. At least they gave her that in the moment, no matter what. And I'm glad she got to hold it and have a moment like, like, hmm. You know, this is really interesting because you were involved with another shortest reign in Paris. <laughs> there was a mysterious show in Paris when you won the title from Molina and lost it the same day. What happened in what Paris? What happened? <laughs> I made the cover and, you know, <laughs> the freak out happened. Oh my goodness. And we got to bring this stuff up. This is the <laughs> thing that would happen. And it's like the debate. Hey, blame me if you guys want to blame me that it was my fault, but it was everybody's fault. What happened? <laughs> Again, when it comes to wrestling, you have to be prepared for every scenario. Again, what if I was hurt? What if all these things happen? You have to be prepared. So that's why, like, if you're the person who's getting pinned, you got to be ready to kick out <laughs> because that's the job. If you're the person on top, you gotta be ready to like pretend you're gonna yeah. get kicked out. We have to protect each other. It's not just one person. You don't blame everybody on one person. This is why, and this made me learn, when we do too many spots that are the same freaking thing, I was told, and I asked multiple times, is it at this point, is this when a cue kick out? Is this when I'm supposed to come in? Is this when I'm supposed to come in? Everybody's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I did what I was told, so so that's the way I saw it. So you know what, I mean? it's miscommunication. I understand that maybe I got it wrong, and I, I'll take the blame. I don't. It doesn't really matter. And that's why when people mess up with me, mess up. 
I say, it's okay, girl. Shit, we can make it work. Yeah. I mess up all the time, too. I forget things, too. This is the beauty of what we do. Nobody knows we messed up, you know? <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, is that everybody was so confused, and it's, I don't, who knows? We were flying, because this is France, right? Yeah. So we flew in that day. So it's fly, 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 travel, travel, travel. Everybody's exhausted. This is towards the end of the trip. So who knows what really happened? This is so, it was like 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can't remember. But I'll, t- I'll, I'll put it on me. It probably was. Who knows? You became one more time champion at that night in Paris. So thank you. Yeah. Can you imagine? I wouldn't get an extra title reign. Like right. we, we out, each talked one on. But I wish that they could have taken this moment and put it on TV and make right. it a run with it. Storyline. Yeah. And I, I, we went to the back. We went all the way to the back and we talked about like, what do we do? What's going to happen? Da, 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 da. And I went being a bitch like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I walked in and I was like, okay, what are we going to do? Because um, I better not get in trouble with this. <laughs> curious case. So you, The curious case. The curious case at the tail end of your career was you had that championship, which was unified in a unification match, which was super sad. And then you turned on Natty with that huge slap, which we're all like, yeah, Phil Molina's back. I was trying to recreate the Maria slap. Yeah. And then you quickly left the company. Like, what What happened? It was such a shocking moment for everyone. Because I left on my own free will. No, just <laughs> no this is the way I took it. And who knows? Like, really, I, I, don't, I don't know. We could always speculate. But I have my speculations, and I'll end up writing it in my book. Because that, in my mind, it's <laughs> okay. like, well, I don't want to get in trouble for saying stuff. Because, again, it's a speculation. But I already felt like, oh somebody looked at me the wrong way and that means I'm going to get fired and everybody told me no 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 Melina they need you they're like that kid they couldn't happen that can't happen I said yeah it's going to happen because they looked at me that way it's, it was like a f- you and they thought I was crazy and it happened and I said it's okay it kind of felt like a relief the burdens off my shoulders everybody like I thought like the rumors and the heat and pissing people off like it would it would go away because now they, they can't blame me for stuff anymore and so it's good it felt good but when it came to to that moment I they told me that it was because um the whole line creative had nothing for me and they said they said we have so many new girls we need to start bringing some girls up and we need to get rid of some of the girls and they're like are you okay with that and i said well i kind of have no choice but i said yeah i mean i've been around long enough to know that people get let go and they get brought back and i said i know i'll be brought back i said it's okay this is for me to grow on my own so i said i'm good and then speaking of the fifth moment is Whoa! Oh, look at her face! Your triumphant return to WWE at Royal Rumble! I thought hell froze over. I was like, what? I'm gonna do a rumble? And then it was second, I was like, that's right. I'm here like thinking, okay, I get to do my entrance. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank God. Seriously, and everybody's thinking it had like a wardrobe malfunction. And I was like, no, I was taking my time because. I'm such a douche. I'm like, the party doesn't start until I roll in. You know You're what right. I mean? You're right. <laughs> so this match does not start until I slide into the ring. So I'm going to take my time. Sleeping in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> and I really was intending to be a heel. I wanted to come in as a villain because she's a baby face. And everybody loved me. That I was like, oh, I'm going to give everybody hugs. I broke character. I like, I cried. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Tell me the story of like getting that call and like getting prepared for it. Oh my goodness. When they told me, I was like... Are you serious? <laughs> and they were so sweet about it. And like, I said, thank you. Thank you very much because I wanted to knock it off the bucket list. I've never been a part of the Rumble. That's something that happened after my era. And I honestly thought I would never see the day that, you know, r- the wrestling company would give women that opportunity. Yeah. So to be able to witness it is one thing, but to be a part of it. <laughs> You know, I, I didn't get to do like the whole what I grew up with when you do the whole run and slide, hit your, your like specialty moves, like your signature moves, yeah. and then you fire up and then get creamed. Like I didn't get to do what I saw growing up. Yeah. But still, this was a special moment, unique to me. Kind of funny and the way they kind of like took away the whole entire match that, that Sasha and I had. But at the same time made me laugh because I was like, you know what? That's my luck, you know? Of course that's going to happen to me. This is a dream match for so many people. There was speculation that, like, you slipped. Like, if, what's the truth to it? And uh, Okay. I don't want to knock how people perceive wrestling, but at the same time, I'm like, 
I question if you're a worker and you thought I slipped, I really need you to reevaluate like, <laughs> like how you see things. Bitch! Cause okay, so I was protecting my knee always. I always do it. But when she threw me out, I wanted to hit the um, t um, apron first and then kind of fall out and go face first. But when I hit the mat, I was like, oh, and then I thought I made it look fake. Mm. Like I threw myself out and I was like, oh man. And I probably actually did, but I didn't slip. So it's making, having it look like I slipped actually good yeah, because yeah, it, good. it looks real in a Realistic, sense. Realistic, yeah. Because I thought I threw my, it looked like I threw myself out. <laughs> but that was what was supposed to happen was she was just supposed to dump me out and that's it. So I stayed in the ring longer than what they wanted me to. <laughs> Everyone's like, she was supposed to be in there longer. I was like, no, I stayed in there way too long. <laughs> I think it's like, people were just shocked that this happened. Like, they wanted you to have that moment. Cut, cut the camera, what? What? But see, what is, this is how weird, like, people's perceptions go. It's like, instead of acting like, oh, is she okay? Or what happened? It's like, put the blame on me. Uh, which is, which mean. really sums up my experience in wrestling, mean. where it's like, yep. Yeah. Everything's my fault. Yeah. But yeah, but the fans were like so happy to see you. And you know, a lot of people don't know that you've been wrestling outside for years, for decades now. Like you were in Stardom Tour, Stardom USA Tour, right? Oh my goodness, that was such a good experience. You were in NWA, you were in Empower, you were in Impact Wrestling. So where are you with wrestling now? Oh my goodness, for the first time in 20 something years, I took a break from wrestling for a year. So I'm probably going to try to like, I got to get back in shape because I enjoyed my vacation a little too much, but I'm happy with it. Yeah. But I'll, I'll get back in shape. I'm going to, I want to do stuff with Alicia, of course, for Fox. But, but at the same time, I want to start managing or if anything, I want to start doing stuff behind the scenes or anything. Honestly, Melina could do anything. Yeah, true. <laughs> but I just want to do everything to make you guys smile and to be and to have fun. That's what matters to me. I mean, you have so much to give, so I'm so ready. So ready to see what you do next. Maybe another rumble. We're waiting for it. <laughs> well, now that I see Naomi's out, I'm like, oh my goodness. Ooh. Either I work with her, work against her. I don't care. I just want to be around her so I can hug her. Impact Wrestling, here we come. Well, thank you so much, Molina, for counting down top five moments with us. Uh, what do you want to tell the fans that are so obsessed with you? They love you. The fans that love me that know me know that I'm not a hateful person but for the people who don't when I talk crap and say like I'm gonna smack that bitch and da 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 bitch uh, oh my god I love like I love just being stupid like <laughs> so I just love just making people laugh and saying like silly things and that's such a habit of mine so really I never want to hurt anybody I don't wash, wish anybody any bad um, the character is a character and I love the character it's funny to me so when the character wishes somebody bad I do not wish that upon anybody in real life so I want to make that clear people think of course Melina we get it you, some people don't. <laughs> and I want to make something clear that you're a freaking legend and we all love you so much. You gave so much to all of us Diva fans, the fans out there. So I just want you to know that. Oh, I feel it. I hope you guys feel mine. I Seriously. And I want everybody to know because throughout this whole entire journey, in those moments, everything you just saw, all the favorites and everything, I never in my wildest dreams and during that time did I think that anybody would ever think of it as a favorite or love it or value it. You don't know about things in the moment. So when you question your life and when you question who you are, when you feel sad and down, you don't know if, how other people see you. Other people around you love you. You are a shining star too. So let this be a lesson that everything I've gone through and if you're going through the same thing, you are loved and appreciated by people around you and by me.